you like jazz? 2022's The Forest Quartet video game review. So, I got this game for free. Nothing I say in this is going to be out of bitterness. Yeah, I uh, really love this game. And I, let's see, I played it on PC. I got it for free on Epic. And, yeah. Um, plot. When a, well, quartet of jazz musicians loses their singer, Nina, it hits the other three pretty hard. You know, they, they're supposed to be a goodbye performance for her, and, you know, as soon as the game has told you this information, Nina's spirit rises from the grave, and you go out to find the other three. Not to haunt them, mind you, to inspire. The band live in the forest because of the beauty of nature, the joy of getting away from the city, which at least one of them says led to mild depression, although he's not in love with coming right out and saying that. The three remaining members of the quartet breathe, b grieve. Mouth didn't want to cooperate there. Grieve in three different ways, helping communicate that there truly is no wrong way to mourn. The game has a heavy emphasis on the quiet forest and its ability to protect beauty or be kind of creepy and gloomy. And when you play as Lean, Nina, you do literally spread light. One of your moves is to sing, which impact the world around her is part of solving a number of the, the puzzles. And she really does have a beautiful voice. Great casting. At the very start of the game, there is a little bit of Danish spoken. Not long after that, the lines do start being in English. And it is one of those things, I'm Danish, so there, there was one line, at least, where I picked up, yeah, that was, they kind of just ran that through Google Translate, because the, the words he says kind of make sense in Danish, but once you have it in English, it sounds slightly off. But I don't think I spotted more than just the one, which is quite impressive. You know, it's one of the, most Danes don't learn English until we we already have a very firm grasp on Danish. So a lot of us do struggle. I do myself sometimes struggle. You know, I I learned English at age seven. The best the best kids TV was all in English back then here in Denmark. So yeah, um, but for a lot, you know, it's it's very much this second language kind of thing. So, you struggle with some of these things. Now, the... Let's see... Yeah, and, and you know, to be clear, the stuff that's said in Danish is subtitled. All of the... Every spoken line in this is subtitled. This game makes me proud to be Danish. We really do have a lot to offer the rest of the world. The atmosphere in this could not have come from just any country. Now, the... You can either control your character with W S A D E R and um, space. Wait, is there also shift? Yeah, I think also shift. Yeah. Um, others have pointed out, you know, it is the 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 it it plays better with a, a joystick. It is perfectly fine to play it with keyboard, you know, for most of this I played it with a keyboard and I was happy with it, but there definitely are a couple of keys where, like, this was not originally made specifically for, you know, at least it, it seems like it was made for joystick and then they just kind of chose because it is a little awkward you, you may be already tell you know you use e and r when you know yeah um and the let's see yeah the game does not throw you in the deep end demand you swim the way that for example dark with a q does at the ver uh, let's see yes at the very start you get you know some some of the first stuff is very tutorial e and the game is quite linear, not in a bad way. And let's see the yeah, a beautiful moody score. 
and every so often we'll hear bits of interviews and such with the band members that help you get to know them as people now I've seen some people some some have, have criticized the game saying they they didn't feel they got to know the band enough and I can appreciate that I don't think you know it's not so much I wouldn't really call this a character study so much as it's showing us why the forest is important to them and the positive impact that Nina had you know and and she the the fictional character in this game of Nina is inspired by the the actual person Emma Ninel hence the you know they didn't do very much to change the name obviously and yeah it is very much like the people working on it working through their their grief at the the death and the let's see um there we go yes um the the and and I do think that the the these interview bits and and other lines do a really great job of that you know if if you focus specifically on that I th I think you'll be satisfied I certainly was you know and uh let's see yeah, uh, solid voice acting, and as one of the six million people who speak Danish, I can confirm the acting for the Danish lines is also excellent. And yeah, the game is not super challenging, it's really more of a mood piece, and this is meant as a neutral descriptive statement, not a criticism. I personally love it. I, I, it's just, it's important to know what you're getting into. I saw several, you know, I, I read every review I found on Steam, and not all, but several of the negative ones really were just, this isn't what I thought it was going to be. You know, they thought that the puzzles were going to be tougher. And and I certainly do appreciate that. You know, if you if you got into this thinking it was going to be, for example, Dark with a Q, yeah, that is definitely not, you know, the, the case. But, you know, it's, yeah, it does a, a really amazing job at the atmosphere. Like, I'm one of those people who find it very... I, I don't think I could ever live in, in the woods. But playing a game like this, you know, I, I find myself thinking, wait, could I? Is it? I mean, maybe if I, if I, you know... And I think that's a pretty good sign. You know, this is the... the it, it really does feel just the, the, the nature in the, in the game feels just incredible just you there, there really is this just yeah um the let's see yeah the, the puzzles are very basic stuff not like brain teasers it's really just making you appreciate the world it's set in this amazing forest and how you can make positive change to it it is perhaps more challenging than, say, Adios, which similarly is not trying to challenge you in that regard. But really, like, this could easily be the first puzzle game you ever play. I might recommend this to people I know that love this kind of atmosphere, but have never played a puzzle game before. You know, there, there's a lot of, of puzzle games these days where, like, if you try to brute force it, it's gonna, t you know, again, Dark with a Q, if you try to brute force that thing, good luck. Like, I hope you cleared your weekend, because it's going to take forever. This one, like, you know, if, if you don't want to, you know, a lot of the time, like, the, the, the solutions are either very intuitive, or literally you just have to find a spot and activate a thing, and it'll show you this is what you're supposed to do, and you just go to the other place and do that thing, you know, it is, yeah, it, it legitimately is just, you're affecting the, the, the world around you in a, in a positive way, more than, you know, oof, how are you gonna get this next, you know, I, I record this, you know, just a few minutes, I, I hit record, yeah, minutes after completing the game, and even the the very last puzzle, 
really not challenging. It's not supposed to be. I honestly, one of the, when you go to, to Steam, Puzzle is actually the second most popular. User. I'm pretty sure they're supposed to be in order of that. Anyway, yeah, it's the second that pops up. You know, Indie and then Puzzle. And I don't, I, I think that, it, you know, I, I kind of wish, let's see, because there are others, let's see, other than that, it has relaxing and exploration, and I definitely think those are much more, I'm not sure I would really call this a, a puzzle game, you know, I, I've, you know, it's less puzzle and more task. You know, like a lot of, of Soma, which again is not a criticism of that game. I appreciate, you know, a lot of people, they didn't, they wanted, they wanted to try something different. And I do love that game. Now, um, the spirit of Nina can float upwards, and for the following I'll be referring to it as flying. Where a lot of games that have flying get a lot out of the, the danger connected to flight. What if you crash? You know, that that's something, for example, I love the, the flying in Just Cause 3. And in that, the it, it was always partially affected by this this thrill of, you know, what if I crash, you know, kind of thing. And here, it really, this this focuses on, I wouldn't quite say the freedom because it is very linear, there's not a lot of different places you can go, and you you don't move particularly fast. But on the majesty, you know, the, the way that it opens up areas that you wouldn't be able to reach without it. You know, and, and it is the, the kind of thing where the, the floating... Like, you wouldn't have to make a lot of changes to the game to just write it out, which, you know, just Cause 3, that's a completely different game if you take out the flying, the, the wingsuit. But it really does add to, you know, and, and so the, the, the puzzles also, not difficult, but they help you appreciate, you know, the, the, these, the, the themes that it's exploring. I'm trying to not just repeat myself here. Um... Let's see. Yeah, you know, if Nina is, at this point, the embodiment of inspiration, at least to the other three members of the quartet, then as cheesy as it is, there ain't no mountain high enough to keep her from them. Amazing sound design. It really helps sell the, the world. And the jazz soundtrack is very effective. Let's see. The, the game reminds me somewhat of Dear Esther, albeit with more interaction. This thing of getting across atmosphere and voiceover snapshots that tell us some stuff about the protagonist and the people who affected their life, and with it not really providing incredibly tough challenges the way that, for example, Penumbra and Amnesia games do, which also have voiceover and thick atmosphere. But yeah, if this sounds good to you, 100% I recommend playing this game. I thoroughly enjoyed it, and it actually, like, I'm going to be looking at some of the other games by the, the yeah, the, um, let's see, yeah, there's something on the, the, what's it called, some, on, on the Steam store, there's something called the Bedtime Bundle. Now, the, let's see, it is not that it was developed by, this, this was developed by Mess and Friends, I suppose Americans might pronounce it Mads, but we pronounce it Mess, which is just the most Danish thing in the world, it's, just, it's Mads and Friends, you know, it's just a bunch of friends getting together and, and doing a thing they like. Um, it was published by Bedtime Digital Games, and they're the ones who developed the other three games, which, as of right now, are all on my wish list. Um, yeah, just the... the um, once you know what you're getting yourself into with this, 
you know, I also recommend looking at the, the you know, the, the Steam store has a number of screenshots that really help get across the, the art style, the, the atmosphere, and yeah, very, very, let's see, and I think also the, let's see, the, the trailer also gives you a pretty good idea of what it's like. The the graphics aren't like photorealistic, but they're not trying to be. They do look really great and they get across what they're trying to. Um let's see. Right, I did I saw one person say that the the you know they didn't think that because one of the one of the people who are grieving, one of the three members, th they felt that it didn't come across as the, as him having anxiety, which it's meant to, they say, oh, oh, he comes across more as, as paranoid. I see what they mean, but I personally think it is completely consistent with anxiety. And... Let's see. Uh, right. Uh, one of the features is you can turn. Nina can can at points turn herself into a, a swarm of butterflies, and you know this enables her to to get to places that she couldn't in you know in, at human size. And again, it just really the the what's the word. It, it, it you know gets across the the beauty of nature and I am officially just repeating myself at this point. Yeah, um, this is a an eight out of ten. Right. Uh, yes, it's not hugely replayable, and I do think that that is something they could have made it more. Uh, replayable. Uh, let's see. I don't think. I. Uh, I don't think it has, the the. Um, oh right, and and yes. Uh, there is also there's an upcoming game by, Mads. I'm. Well, let's see. It says our upcoming game from the Force Quartet site, but the de developer is called Softlock. But but yeah. Uh, bo bobbles, I guess is how you pronounce it, but yeah, that is also that also looks quite good. Um, I'll use Google real quick. Does the forest quartet have achievements? Um, let's see. Oh. Fair enough. There are there are nine achievements, and let's see. Yeah, now I remember why I yeah. It's it's the fact that a bunch of them are legitimately just you know get so and so far into the game. There is one where you have to... Yeah, if you turn on all the lamp posts, and that of course means you have to explore very carefully to find all the lamp posts. Yeah, other than that, these are basically the... the yeah, just... You know, the, the kind of achievement that's really just, you know, rewarding you for having played through as much of it as you have. And, yeah, I, I don't think it's a huge problem, but obviously that does mean that, you know, replayability is not the, the you know, as as high as games that do have more achievements and collectibles and that sort of thing but I don't think it really needed it and yeah um, that is everything 
So, yeah. I will be back next week with another video game review. So, catch you then.